Jeremy from Jeremy.net. And this is a bottle cap. It is the bottle cap that I use as an inkwell when I am drawing comics. I think it's just off of a, a bottle of uh, a Coke. But um, I had posted a picture of this on my, uh, my blog and I don't know, a few weeks back. And I had mentioned how I've been using um, bottle caps as ink wells for a while now. And I used to just let the ink dry up in the bottle cap, like when I was done using it. And after every few months, I would have to like take a screwdriver or a knife and just pry out all of the, uh, the dried up ink that was in the bottom. And it wasn't only recently until the past few months that I finally realized that's stupid. Why am I letting that stuff dry up there? I just, so every time I finish using it, I just take a piece of tissue and swap it out when I'm done. So it always remains about as clean as something you store ink in is going to get. But it saves me from having to chisel away at it. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because of my friend Melissa. I posted the photo on Facebook with the same commentary, and she said, This might be a silly question, but why don't you just use an ink pot? Aha! It's not a silly question at all. The reason why somebody would end up using one of these things as, a, uh, as an inkwell in the first place, there are a few different reasons. Now, mind you, I just saw other comic book creators doing it, and eventually once I started trying it, I saw that it worked for me. So these are the reasons why. I've got three reasons. Reason number one. This bottle, it is a very old bottle of a Higgins Black Magic ink. Um, I actually continue to use this bottle because it's just the right size to keep in my travel gear with me. So if I'm going to be inking at work during lunch or if I'm going to be inking on the road or hang out with friends, you know, I can carry this around in my bag. But this bottle I regularly refill with ink. This is what stores the ink that I'm using at any given time. And I could just unscrew the top of this. And once it's open, I can just, you know, leave it on the table, dip my brush in, you know, get ink on it and keep working. And some people do that, and that's just fine if you want to. But here's the problem. The ink, you know, waterproof India ink dries really fast. That is the reason why comic creators tend to use it to ink with. In fact, that's why I'm putting the cap back on. And it's not going to dry out instantly. I mean, you could leave it out for I've never thought to test how long to leave out leave it out and let it dry because I'm like why would I want to waste an entire bottle of ink but the point is is that if you just leave your bottle sitting open for an hour or two unless you live in a very humid climate the ink is going to start drying inside the bottle just from being exposed to the air it's not going to dry up to the point where it's going to be solid you're not going to be able to use it anymore but it's going to become thicker and once that ink starts becoming thicker, then you've got a viscosity problem. Because every comic inker or artist that uses ink, India ink on a regular basis, they like their ink a certain certain consistency. Maybe they like theirs a little bit on the runnier side, maybe they like it on the thick side. Um, but whatever it is that you, the way you like your ink so that it works best when you have your brush on the paper, that consistency, that viscosity is just how you like it. And for me, Usually when I get the bottle right out of the, um, when I first get the bottle, generally it tends to be, I tend to use it just the way the manufacturers make it. If it seems a little bit on the, uh, the runny side for me or not as thick, then I, well, the next step, the, the second reason I do it will kind of alleviate that problem altogether. But the point being is that if I need it to be a little bit less watery, then I may leave it open for a little bit to let it thicken up a tiny bit. If I need it to be, if it's too thick, I may add a couple of drops of water and leave it closed, you know, shake it up a little bit and let it sit so it kind of, you know, mixes around, you know, fluidly. But the point is when you get this ink, the thickness and consistency that you like it, you want it to stay that way, which means opening it, I pour out just what I need and then I close it again. That way this bottle stays pretty close to the right consistency I want. And I wrote every time I start to ink, I don't have to do a chemistry project. So now I'll show you 
the second reason why I do it. But before that, I will show you how I actually tend to use the ink. The first thing I do with this ink well is before I start, I have a small straw, a little stirrer straw like you use for coffee, and I will stick that in a bottle of water, and I have my finger on the end of the straw, like that old trick you do with the kid when you would like use it as an eyedropper, and I will usually drop one, come on, come on, Whoa, whoops, my aim's off so I'm looking at the camera instead of just looking at the damn water, the one or two drops at the bottom of the well, at the bottom of the cap. Now the reason why I put one or two drops in at the bottom is because usually if I'm inking, I'm usually working for about 45 minutes or an hour, sometimes two hours. And, um, pardon me, I'm having a little bit of an allergy attack. Um, if I'm sniffling a lot sneezing, you will have to forgive me. Now, then, I will take the, uh, the water, the, uh, the ink that's in the bottle, and I will usually just drop out... I tried to go real slow, and so if I can just do it like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It doesn't have to be exactly ten drops. Sometimes it's, you know, eight or nine. If the bottle's really full, it comes out really fast, and I end up maybe getting like ten or fifteen drops in there. But usually I aim for about ten drops of ink. Ten drops of ink plus two drops at the bottom of the well, what that does is it keeps it from drying out as quickly while I'm inking. So it makes the uh, the amount of ink that I have in there, it's not that I want to thin the ink out, I just want the amount that's in there to stay more fluid for a longer period of time so I have you know more flexibility while I'm working. So that's you know step one. Now the second reason why I like to use an inkwell instead, uh, why well, I like using an, a bottle cap for my inkwell instead of getting a, a larger ink pot or taking an ink directly out of this. Reason number two is brush control. Now when I say brush control, I don't mean the control you have over your hand while you're inking. I mean the control over how much ink you get on your brush as you uh, dip it in there. Now I can dip it in and if I'm doing a bunch of really thin delicate lines, I can just sort of graze the surface of the ink that's in here and you know, get a little bit on there. Then if I go and lay down some lines, I can, because I have less ink on it, I can have a little bit more control. And that's pretty thick, but this is a larger brush. Usually if I'm trying to do really thin lines, I'll use a double zero. And plus I tend to like wipe it a little bit when I first put it in there. But get in here and get a little bit more control with my lines. Get some more thick thin, delicate lines. Now, true, that's just me doing quick little rough scratchy sketches, but the difference between being able to dip in here and say, all right, I wanna get a lot of ink on there because I'm doing an area that either has some bold lighting or, you know, if I'm using a larger brush because I'm gonna be, you know, blacking in an area this is all control that I have because at any given time when I dip my brush in here, not only can I see exactly how much is on here, but I can also say, all right, that looks a little more than I wanted. I can just rub a little bit off on the rim and get just the amount of brush, the ink I want on there so that I can make the brush do what I want. I mean, inking, that's the interesting thing when you're drawing an ink is that yeah, a large part of it is developing manual dexterity with the brush and learning how to control it and make it do what you want. But then it's also learning exactly how much ink to have on the brush so that you can make the lines you want. Um, finding brushes that work for you, that you're happy with how much stiffness it has, how much give it has. But being able to control the amount of ink on the brush at any given time is a big part of making the brush do what you want it to do. Um, if you're always have a, and that's the thing, I can see what's going on in here. Now with this ink well, let's say I were to unscrew this, 
Now, I could work directly from this inkwell. And in fact, when I take figure drawing classes, I do work directly from the inkwell, but that's because I keep a separate bottle of ink just for figure drawing class, and I don't get as concerned about the viscosity and the control. You know, I accept the fact that it's gonna be a little looser because it's kind of a live drawing session. It's not about having the precision and the control that I'm trying to have when I'm working on my comics. But with this, you know, the ink, it's not just the fact that we're on a video so you can't get the good resolution. When you're staring into this thing, you're staring into the bottom of a dark pit. Like I in real life here can see some bubbles that are in there, but I can't really see the bottom. So when I get in, put my brush in here, it's like I kind of have to guess, just kind of stick it down there and come out. And maybe I get just the tip, maybe I only get a tiny bit, maybe I go all the way up the ferrule and I'm like dipping the thing into a whole bunch of ink. Um, and then it becomes a whole thing of like, well, how much do I want to wipe off? How much excess ink do I want to get rid of? You know, you're kind of wasting ink a little bit, even though, you, again, much like with this, you can wipe it off onto the rim of the cap. You can wipe it off on the rim of the cap. But why waste that much ink when you can just very easily, as you're going here, you can see, oh, I just want that much. Or if you want a little bit more, you dip it a little bit more. You get what you need, and then you just start drawing the lines you want to make. So that's reason two, is to control the amount of ink that's on the brush. Now, reason three for using a bottle cap as an inkwell, as opposed to having a separate inkwell or drawing directly from the bottle. Reason three relates directly to reason one, viscosity control. Now, like I said, I put those two little drops of ink it, um, two drops of water in the bottom of the cap before I put the ink in to just help it stay fluid. Now, you'd be surprised how much you can get, how much drawing you can get out of just 10 drops of ink. You saw how much I put in there. I can usually ink like probably two, at least two panels with that amount. Unless it's a panel that's got a lot of heavy blacks, I can usually ink one or two panels with just 10 drops of ink. Um, if you've got a large area of black, then, you know, I may end up using twice that much. But, you know, a little bit goes a long way with this. Now, what that also means is the same way that I want to control the viscosity of the ink that is inside the bottle, the same thing applies when it's outside of the bottle. When I'm using this cap, if I'm inking for about, you know, a half hour... Drop my brush, because my ass is clumsy. But you know what, this is live, this is art. This is what you see when uh, artists make things, we drop stuff. Um, when I am inking over a period of time, let's say 40 minutes in, this the ink starts thickening up because it's slowly drying, even with those drops of water on there. Now what I may do is as it's drying, if I know I've only got a little bit extra time, I'm not gonna be able to, it's not an all day inking session. If I've only got like another 15 or 20 minutes of time left to ink, then what I may do is take out that straw dropper again, and I may just say, oh, okay, let me just add an extra, you know, just, come on. Just add one drop of water, and that is just enough. Now, usually I will have to stir that extra drop of water into the ink because it will it's not like oil and water it does mix but I do have to kind of stir it around otherwise it'll give me a much more watered down line which I don't want I really really want is to have it mix in equally well so it gives me what it was giving me before and it's just not thickening up on me sometimes what I'll do is I'll put that drop of water at one edge of the uh, the area where there's ink in the well and then just use the ink that's not on the opposite side, but just a little bit away from it. So I know that it's slowly hydrating the uh, the amount of ink that's in there, but I'm not getting the part that's watery, which is right where the drop is. So I it just depends on my mood. I try different things. It's an ongoing experiment. But that's reason three. The same way that I want to control the viscosity in the uh, inside the ink well, inside the ink bottle, I want to control the viscosity of the ink in the cap. If I know that I'm going to be drawing for like two or three hours, I'm going to make an afternoon out of it or a longer session, then a lot of times I may just say, all right, I'm going to add, instead of a drop of water, I may pour in another four or five drops of ink in here. Um, but usually I still have to add a little bit more water 
whenever I'm adding ink because it's kind of like a little bit of a chemistry thing. I want to make sure that I'm not just adding the ink. I also want to add a little bit of water to keep it more viscous. And that's the thing. When I'm using this small little thing, this small little bottle cap, each drop of water counts. And I can very precisely control drop for drop of water and drop for drop of ink and make it exactly as thick or thin as I want. And even though I don't usually work in ink wash, if I did want to do a lot of ink wash on comics, then I could have precise control over exactly how how much water to ink ratio there is by using this method. Whereas if I'm putting, let's say I, this thing starts thickening up a little bit, because I don't know how many drops of water equal one bottle, each time I add water to this, if I did add water, I've got way less control in terms of knowing how much I'm affecting the balance. Like I could just kind of eyeball it, the same with them. I, this thing, it feels, this process feels kind of eyeballish, but it feels like an acceptable level. Whereas with this, I really feel like, oh, I may have no idea how many drops I'm adding until it's too many drops. Or if I need to let it thicken up, well then I'm like sitting there with a watch and like leaving the, co the cap open, having to time it and then come back in like 20 minutes. If I leave it out for 30 minutes, like, oh, that was too long and now it's too thick and I have to another drop. The amount of control that I can put into this, much simpler. Just an extra drop of water here, extra drop of ink, and I can kind of say, well, if it's still not thick enough, add two or three more drops of ink, or if it's still too runny, add another drop of water. The amount of control I have over what's in here versus what's in here, far greater control in here. So I'd much rather mess with this and leave this the way I want it. So those are my three reasons. Controlling the viscosity in the bottle, controlling how much ink ends up on the brush when I'm drawing, and controlling the amount of viscosity in the cap. And I might as well mention while I'm at it, the uh, this bottle, I've been using this for a number of years now, but I just refill it with whatever India ink is handy. Right now, I'm currently using um, Speedball Super Black India ink. Um, I think I just picked up a bottle at Michael's. And this bottle's almost empty. Um, it's actually a pretty good sized bottle, if I can scoop back a little bit. Yeah, this is like a nice big bottle that I use, and I just would refill the uh, the Higgins bottle whenever I needed to. Now this one's almost empty, and now I will be moving to uh, a bottle, a brand new fresh bottle of uh, Dick Blick um, Black Cat Waterproof India Ink. So, you know, I mean, some people are very brand specific. Uh, I've tried Pelican. I didn't like it that much. Um... But I can generally make any India ink work for me. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. So, like I mentioned, even though I'm trying to keep the, uh, the chemistry or the viscosity of what's in the bottle pretty consistent, it does change a little bit from time to time. And the reason for that is because whenever I'm done inking, like I said, if I sit down and ink for an hour, I don't usually go through all of the ink that's in this well. When I'm done, I will just take this and pour it right back into the bottle. So as long as I try to keep what's in here relatively close to the viscosity that I like, and I keep what's in here relatively close to the viscosity that I like, it's almost like the ink bottle gets a little bit of a refresh because obviously having put a little bit of water in there, Unless this is, some days it's a little thicker because I didn't need to add any extra water to it. So I may be thickening up what's in the bottle a little bit. Some days I will be adding a little bit of water to make it, uh, you know, to, I may have just added some water recently. So it ends up getting a little bit more water back in here. So it gets rehydrated a little bit because over time it's good for the bottle to just get a little bit of extra water in there. But anyway, the whole point when I originally posted this that started Melissa asking her question was, you know, well, the point of me, the video that I, the picture that I posted was about me not letting ink dry in there. So when I'm done, I wipe down the, the neck of my, uh, my ink bottle so that way it doesn't harden when I put the cap on and then it becomes a pain in the ass to get off. And then... I just take my little cap, and I take the same tissue, just swab it out real quick. 
toss that away. And then just set this aside until the next time I'm ready to get to some inking. That's it for now. You can check out my website, jeremy.net. That's G-E-R-I-M-I dot net. That's where you can buy my comic books and artwork. You can also sign up for my free weekly newsletter to get a behind-the-scenes look at my creative process, updates on new comic books and artwork releases, and upcoming comic book convention appearances. Okay, go be creative.